Hey, party people. Welcome to Cloud Conversations. I'm Azure McFarlane, one of your hosts, and I'm joined here by my friend Pete Rising and also our guest today, Nate Chamberlain. I don't know which side of the screen you're on. Uh, hey, y'all. How are you doing? Really good. good. Really oh. good, Azure. It's lovely to see you. Uh, we were just talking before we uh, started recording that this is the first time that you and I have recorded together mm -hmm. on a show since you joined uh, way back in January, February, whenever it was. So it's oh, great it's to finally work time. with you on a on a show. Um, fantastic. Yes. But uh, it's it's lovely sunny day here in the northeast of England. It certainly looks like it's nice and bright where you are as well as you. I can't it's, really tell. It's overcast, um, it? but you know, like yeah, the lighting looks great here. So I'm not going to complain. <laughs> Good lighting. It's really good. But um, but anywho, I have the absolute privilege to introduce um, a returning guest to Cloud Conversations because um, we have Nate Chamberlain with us, my very, very dear friend and uh, co-author and fellow Microsoft MVP. And um, we thought it would be a great idea to get Nate back on the show um, today because as we record this, uh, our second edition of our exam guide, MS 700 Microsoft Teams Administration, or Managing Microsoft Teams, I forgot the title already, that, yeah. has <laughs> been released today. And it sort of crept hey. up us on a bit. But, but hey, Nate, um, if you would, will you just sort of reintroduce yourself <laughs> to the viewers and listeners, tell us a bit about who you are, and then we can chat a bit about the book and, and whatnot. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And thanks again for having me back. It's such a, an honor to be part of this show. I always like seeing the posts and catching up with you guys. So. Uh, thrilled to be here. Um, also, I'm just from Kansas City, Missouri. I live here with my husband, William, and our two cats, Baxter and Leah, who have their own Twitter accounts, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I'm not, you know, working with them and trying to give them new toys and spend all my money on them, I'm usually writing books with Peter or uh, blogging on my blog, NateChamberlain.com. And currently, I'm a, a trainer at Centric Training in Kansas City. So I get to talk about Microsoft 365 all day and night sometimes. Nice. Welcome. I'm, I forgot to say that this is a special episode. Um, oh. so. <laughs> We're really excited to have you here. Also, Pete, I have to remark in the back, like as you're moving, it looks like there's a light underneath your award that keeps kind of like glowing your MVP award. Oh, right. Um, okay. Um, I'm trying to draw sun? attention to it. Let oh. me just see if I Oh, no. <laughs> probably the blinds. Let me just close them. I don't know if you noticed that, Nate, but Tierra Moy's like, ooh, it's shiny. Right, over it looks there. magical. Yeah, Has really... that made a difference? Is that be better? It's still glowy, but I mean, it's okay. Oh. I'm sorry, I got dis I got distracted. Yeah, um, but it looks yeah, really yeah. Um, like a shiny thing. Nate, I want to. <laughs> Nate, I want to know what your cat's Twitter accounts are because I would like to follow yeah. some content. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's uh, Baxter the cat KC. And then I think the other one's Leah the Cat KC. And it's actually my husband, William, who supervises them and makes sure that they're they're posting appropriately. So. Love oh, amazing. This. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I no longer want to talk about the book. I want to talk about the cats because I knew about Baxter <laughs> because I saw mm -hmm. you posted a picture of Baxter reading the first edition of our book the yes. other day. So I followed oh, yeah. that, of course, but I had no <laughs> idea about Leah. So I'm gonna have to we're gonna have to get these handles in in the show notes. Yes, yeah, Leah's a Siamese, and she's got, uh, I can't remember, there's some other breed in her that gives her just this cute little white toe on her back foot, so she's a little special, and uh, she recently had a really viral post that got like 5,000 likes just because she was really enjoying her new toy called the bird, yeah. Okay, um, I'm over here just, you know, <laughs> looking up. Oh, hello. Okay, I'm satisfied. Uh, we can we can go back to talking about this book now because um, I'm very I got very excited. Uh, this is a, this is a great episode thus far. <laughs> awesome! This this is fantastic. Do, do do you have any cats or pets yourself? As you, I can't remember if you do. I do not. Not here. Um, my parents have a cat at home. My sister has two cats. I don't have any. I've been thinking about getting a pet, but I'm also like responsibility. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we. I have a lot of plants, though, so I I okay. start with plants. I can I can upgrade to to pet later. Yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice plant in the background there. I got a fake one behind me. I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, same yeah. here. Once you have cats, it has to be a fake plant. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, this is awesome. But um, so yeah, the book. Um, we did a thing, as the saying goes. We, we did a thing again, as the saying goes. Mm -hmm. 
and we we got together. God, I can't believe how much time has passed since right. the first edition there. Because mm -hmm. and, and funnily enough, I just got the reminder in my email a day or so ago that it's been two years since I actually took the exam. So I go, I have to go ahead and renew it now before yeah. June the sixteenth. So. Um, yeah. But yeah, it really sneaks up on you, doesn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think the the first edition we started, I want to say, was it late 2020? Is that right? I think it was, definitely. Okay. Um, and uh, I think the experience that, certainly for me, I don't know if you found the same, I think you, you did sort of allude to this a bit in it as we were going through the processes. Rewriting a book actually is a lot more challenging in many ways than doing it for the first time and going back and revisiting it and there are some things that need to be changed and there are some things that are just fine as they are and there were things that microsoft inevitably changed the descriptions of so you have to go mm -hmm. in and all new screenshots here and different terminologies for things and uh and whatnot so but but yeah i found it a little more challenging how how, how was the experience for you this time there yeah, no, definitely that. So <laughs> I remember going through the first time and it just felt like so much work, uh, but it was a lot of fun. I always enjoy it when I get to partner with you on that. And then uh, the second edition came around and they'd reshuffled all the exam objectives in a pretty dramatic way from that mm -hmm. first edition, which is really what brought that challenge. So, you know, kind of restructuring the book, taking out pieces, which made me worried about our page count. But of course they added stuff and we ended up with more pages. <laughs> so uh, yeah. a, lot, a lot more work than I thought it would be. How does it work like authoring a book across continents? Like, can you both speak to this experience? Like, how long did this whole process take? Um, yeah, I'm interested to know. I've never written a book before, so I'd love to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think our first edition, Peter, wasn't it six months? That it took us about mm -hmm. six, and this one was about seven months mm -hmm. or so, because we started, I think, in October. Is my math right there? <laughs> Something Sounds like that. Right. Sure, yeah, so we'll call it that. <laughs> yeah, around seven, less than 12. How about that? <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't take too long when you've got two people working on it, because I know mm -hmm. uh, Peter and I have both written books by ourselves, and sometimes that can take, you know, a year or so, because yeah. um, you've just got the whole thing to do by yourself. And uh, Peter, I was just thinking about your, your MS500 uh, with Purview, you know, being rebranded and everything. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that's kind of something that's on Aww. your radar, too. <laughs> yeah, it is. It has been preying on my mind as well. And um, packs have been sort of pressuring me a bit. And I've got no excuse now because <laughs> um, the, no sooner was the book announced as finished today from that team that we've been working with. Literally minutes later, an email from the mm -hmm. other team came through saying, right, <laughs> congratulations on MS700. Can we now start working on MS 500 second edition? And I'm like, oh, because no. oh, <laughs> writing They're it waiting. on um, writing it on your own can be so daunting, and especially mm -hmm. the, the first one I ever wrote on my own, um, and it took nine months. Mm -hmm. And yes, and this is why when we came to do MS 700, I really wanted a partner with with you, Nate, um, because. Nate and I had both written books for Pact Publishing before, great people to work with, and uh, some great products, uh, some great titles on their site and print and uh, and online. But doing it together was just such an amazing experience because you got somebody to bounce questions mm -hmm. and ideas off as well. And uh, when you're having one of those imposter syndrome type days, saying, oh, am I right about this? If you need some sanity checking before it goes through the editorial process. So that was just superb having that opportunity mm -hmm. to, to bounce those ideas and and that also gives you the opportunity to maybe divvy up some of the sections in the book to areas that right. you're a bit more comfortable with than say um nay it was and vice versa because you you very very kindly did a lot of the voice related stuff didn't you which mm -hmm. i really wasn't keen on at all <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, I definitely relate to that. And I kind of feel the same. I know this time you took on licensing, which was a brand new topic in this edition. So that's something I feel very uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm glad you took that one. Yeah, that was a challenge. The licensing chapter was very early in the book. I think it's chapter two or three or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it's normally the average sort of chapter size in the book is anywhere between maybe 25 to 35 pages, depending on, on how deep you need to go on the content. But the licensing one really struggled to, uh, you can only put in there what's there. And, and I think it only came to something like 
13 or so pages. <laughs> I think your readers might appreciate that a little bit more, to be honest. <laughs> if there's not much more, don't add anything else. So Right. <laughs> yeah, when it comes to licensing, it's such a strange thing to have that on an exam. I remember when they first started adding those to other exams, and I was like, oh, no, please don't do this to teams. <laughs> and, and then it did come around. And it, it's just such a, an odd thing to me because it changes so frequently. And yes. thinking about, you know, writing a book about it, first of all, and worrying about that staying current, knowing that just the nature of licensing in the first place kind of sets you on edge about it. But hopefully, you know, the fact that they put it on an exam might mean that they're not going to change it too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For for those of us, who, or for those who are listening, instead of watching the, the video, we're over here like wincing with our <laughs> fingers crossed just for, you know, emphatic gesturing. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So oh, then, oh go ahead. I was going to ask about like style. So you you tackle different areas of like different chapters or different chapters. Do your writing styles like how how um, can readers tell whose voice it is who's writing each chapter or each section or you just be like, hey, it's Nate here uh, <laughs> and write it. <laughs> Yeah, maybe for edition three, we could have little cartoon people of ourselves. <laughs> I imagine yeah. it like the um, like the 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 four dummies books, right? Yes. They have like the little they have like little sidebars and in, mm. in the margins and whatnot. So I didn't know if it was like that where you have like little people in there and be like, it's Nate speaking, and then you know, talk. <laughs> right, no, that'd be a lot of fun. Um, yeah, I think the only way you might be able to tell, because I think we're both kind of consistent, Packet helps us a lot with like how we should write and they make sure that our tone is consistent throughout. So they kind of make us match in that regard. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the screenshots for anybody who's looking for some Easter eggs, you might see our profile pictures or like our credentials, like our names or something at some point uh, mm -hmm. to tell maybe who is working on that. Ooh, good tip, good tip. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ever going to be a Teams administrator, but I definitely want to get my hands on the book just to like look for that. <laughs> hey, never say never. Well, um, we, we get some print copies um, as, as part of the, the deal, and they're being shipped um, today or tomorrow. So I, I will send you one. There we I go. get I get a present for this. I feel honored. Yeah, <laughs> I should be sending you all like fruit baskets or something for <laughs> this huge contribution. Yeah, because never say never. You never know when you might just fancy. You might have some spare time, and you might just fancy doing a, a quick Teams exam. That's, yeah. that's true. Hmm, uh, might convince but, me otherwise. We'll see. The, okay. The, <laughs> mm, the writing style, though, um, th that is a good clue, though. Definitely, there mm -hmm. are some examples of screenshots where it's got our names on it. But uh, I think that was certainly true in the first book. In this mm -hmm. one, I can't remember now. I think I used more of the demo tenants a bit more here yeah. and there. I think the Contoso ones, because it was just easier to do that in in, in many situations but i think there'll be little nuances as well in the way mm -hmm. we write some of the phrases that we that we lean into where you'll be able to tell you'll not be able to tell in terms of the language differences between uk and us because mm -hmm. the book is written in us english so mm -hmm. it hasn't got um all of the s's that we might have in words like organized in the uk as a it's, it's it's in the U.S. English style with Z, Z so well we say Z and you say Z so right. <laughs> so there's a difference as well so it's in U.S. Mm -hmm. English and um, and packed they they really keep us right there mm -hmm. right down to the um, sort of thing like uh, the the casing on 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 the the, the stuff in the admin centers so, mm -hmm. so when you're in the admin centers of Teams admin center. Is it a capital T for Teams? Is it a lowercase A for admin? And and they want yeah. that to be consistent throughout. So it's very very precise in mm -hmm. in all those sort of ways as well. But um, yeah. it's fun. It's fun. It is. Yeah, and I'm really grateful for their close attention to that because I don't have that kind of close attention. Some of my comments sometimes were like, I noticed you did it this way here and then this way down here and three paragraphs later you cased it this way. And I'm like, just make it consistent. <laughs> Whatever you want is fine with me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, often we refer, just in case anybody's writing out there, we refer to how it's listed in the actual you know, admin center. So we take it verbatim mm -hmm. or try to match Microsoft's guidance just through their demonstration if it's not in documentation. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, exactly. But um, what a what an experience, though. Um, I, I could really do the rest from it now, though. I, I really need a break from writing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was gonna ask, like, how are you typically writing several hours per day? Are you designating certain days per week to write? How does how does this work in the creative process of writing this book? Yeah, Peter, you want to start that one? Yeah, go for it. Um, I <clears throat> I just try and find time to do it whenever I can. And mm -hmm. usually that will revolve around Oliver, my son, mm -hmm. uh, who's, I think most people know Oliver's challenges. If, you, if you've not heard before, he's got very severe autism, but he spends a lot of time at his grandparents these days. He, he goes and stays overnight quite a lot at the minute. So when I'm not doing my day job, which is quite a, <laughs> a busy day job for starters as well, uh, I, I try and write usually at the weekends um, mm -hmm. because I find that on a on a weekday when I'm working I don't have as much energy on an evening and there's I just want to wind down and uh, chill out a bit so I'll tend to maybe <clears throat> I can find that if I put my mind to it Nate and I are both similar in regards that when we click into gear we can churn out a chapter and maybe mm -hmm. between one and two days um, which is quite good going when you think about it <clears throat> but you just I get my head down and I go tunnel vision to the point that look, my, my, my poor wife, Louise, she gets frustrated. So because when I go tunnel vision, I really do. And she's, she's trying to talk to me and I'm like, eh, what? <laughs> and I'm completely in the zone. So she's not going to get my attention. But um, yeah, usually weekends and I've got to be very, very disciplined. And I try not to leave it till the last minute near the deadlines for when a chapter should be submitted. But I've found with this one, with the rewrite, I found it a bit harder. So I did get closer to some of those deadlines. Mm -hmm. I don't think I was ever late. I think I was maybe one day late for one chapter submission. But I think PACT to sort of indicate to us that we are pretty good in terms of authors in, in that regard, because they do have a lot of authors who they say, if you're, you two are brilliant, if you're one day late, that's nothing. We we have to chase a lot of our other authors much longer periods of time than that. How about you, mm -hmm. Nate? Yeah, yeah, absolutely agree. It's kind of those little bursts that you mentioned. So for me, I start each day and I'm like, you know what, after work, I'm going to go ahead and work on this book and then I'm going to do this other thing because I've got other projects too. I'm sure we all do. Uh, but then the end of the day comes and I'm like, you know what, never mind. <laughs> I'm <gonna> chill, maybe <laughs> make myself a drink. <laughs> And then uh, I wait for the weekends. And uh, sometimes, you know, often in the weekends, you'd find me at a local coffee shop. I take my computer and I do the same thing. I get that tunnel vision. I tune out everybody else and I just get some chapters done. Uh, not chapter sounds very impressive. I'll say maybe most of a chapter done. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe over the weekend, I'll get, you know, one and a half to two done. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's during the week. I don't feel like I'm very productive and those weekends become my everything. Sure. That makes sense. I feel like during the week too, after the computer show, I'm like, I don't want, I don't want to do anything else. I feel like, and I don't know if this is for y'all, and it could just be because I started a new job recently where I feel like, ah, it's like drinking from a fire hose um, with everything that at the, it, it, previously it would be, even though I worked long days, it was everything that I did was for a power platform and I was just in it. And these days I'm like, oh, my brain's too full after hours. I'm like, I don't want to look at my computer. I don't want to look at my phone. I don't want to do anything. Mm -hmm. um, so do yep. you guys have that as well, especially with oh, writing? Okay. Okay. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, you know, sometimes to be honest, we, we'd get through these second or third stages of reviews mm -hmm. and it'd be really simple stuff towards the end, like, hey, just go through our comments, respond to these little things. And at the end, a lot of it's just, you know, punctuation, casing, mm -hmm. small stuff, or, you know, even responding to technical reviewer comments, which in the second edition were a lot lighter than our first since, you know, we'd kind of already been mm -hmm. through this. <laughs> Uh, but even knowing that, I would still put off those small tasks sometimes yeah. and wait for more opportunities. And then I would do it. And I'd be like, why did I put this off? That was, that was so quick. That, <laughs> yes, I've been struggling with that lately myself too. It's like, oh, it only took a few minutes. I could have right. done it and saved myself all of this anxiety. I am not alone. Yeah. I am so happy to hear this. <laughs> you, you're definitely not alone. I mean, I'm finding that the way the world is now post pandemic times where mm -hmm. a great deal of us are, are still working predominantly from home mm -hmm. on a day like today, for example, when Oliver is at his grand, he went to his grandparents this morning and he's staying overnight. I maybe ease off the gas a little bit during the traditional work hours and, and think, well, I've got all day to do 
work stuff and I sort of stretch it out a bit. So, um, and so, and in some ways that's a good thing, but in some ways I get to the evening and I think oh, I've still got this to do now mm -hmm. and I could be enjoying my evening. So mm -hmm. I don't know what's best, the sort of pros and cons to each approach, isn't there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, if That's any true. listeners have any ideas, like please let us know because I think we're all in the same boat right now. <laughs> mm. What is the yeah. secret sauce? <laughs> yeah, what is this? I don't. I, I've been talking to friends about this lately too, and I think we're we're all kind of in the same arena, um, just energy levels and our attention. I mean, working working at home. I was just talking to a friend before we started recording. And I'm going to see them on Saturday and we're going to go for like, you know, a hike or a walk. And I was like, I don't think I've actually left my house since Tuesday to do anything. Like I put out the trash on Monday and mm. I think that might have been it. So <laughs> I'm not very good about getting outdoors right now. <laughs> mm. yeah, that's relatable. I feel like sometimes I get trapped in my apartment just by my own choosing. Because yes. in the mornings I'm like, oh, I could go walk to the coffee shop, get some fresh air before I start the day. But then I'm like, I could also just sit here. So. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're going to make a pact uh, to do better. Um, That's right. We're, we'll, we'll make that. You know what, Nate? I'm going to just message you on Twitter now and be like, hey, did you go for that walk this yeah. morning? There we go. Yes. We'll hold each other accountable. We will. We will. Because I thought This is I was a like, good thing. This is definitely a good thing because Louise and I, we quite often will go out for a nice, good, long walk uh, together when, when all of us staying at his grandparents because that's the mm -hmm. only chance we have to do that together. But um, the last few days, I mean, the weather is glorious today, but the last mm -hmm. few days when he last went, weren't so good. That's so we nice. decided, yeah. oh, we're not going to bother. But we've got no excuse because at the end of our street, we've got so many options for lovely walks. We turn right in the back sort of country lane and past a farm and beautiful scenery. And if you go left, there's a there's a there's what used to be a golf course, which is now just um, lovely fields, which you can walk in and you can go into a, a forest there as well and cross over. So it's amazing. We, we don't have to go far at all. So um, it's great. Yeah, we yeah, have a state park ahead. that's like eight minutes from my house. I can't walk there because there's just like a mm. two-lane road, but there's no sidewalks. But it's not that far. But I will say the weather here has been really tricky lately, too. So mm. I, I'm going to use that as my excuse. Nate, we're, we're going to do it. We're going to do that's it. That's right. Yep. Wait, can you can you recruit your husband to go with you for walks? There we go. Yeah, yeah. Yes. See, I get to work from home, and he gets to work kind of about 30 minutes away. Ah, okay. so I've been doing this thing in the pandemic where I'll hit snooze about two extra times. And I'll just sleep <laughs> in. So sometimes he'll get up, and he'll go for a run or something, but I've been bad about sleeping in. So. Okay. <laughs> I'll have mm. to do better. Okay, yeah. accountability buddies, as my friend calls it. Right. Oh, I love this. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one thing that I have had the chance to do recently, and I think both of you may have had the same chance, is as I got to my first in-person event uh, for work recently, I, I traveled down and I met everyone in person. And I think, mm -hmm. Ned, I know you were at a conference the other week, weren't you? And I'm sure I saw mm -hmm. something for you as you as well that you've yeah. been in somewhere in person. Yes. And doesn't it make a difference? Doesn't Don't you realize how much you do actually need it? Because I was thinking, I'm fine this way. I don't need that. But once I got there and I saw people, I was like, Actually, I really have missed this. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Definitely. Agree. Yeah, spot on. So where were you, Asher? I'm outside of Washington, D.C., so I'm in Maryland. Oh, okay. um, I went to my company, HSO, had a company-wide meeting that they hadn't done since before the pandemic. There's maybe oh, about 300 of us in the U.S., but it was really nice to have like a company-wide company meeting. Um, my colleagues are spread out all over the U.S., so there's no like home base for... Um, like power platform, you know, on my team. So I think the next closest person now is Boston, uh, Boston mm. or Chicago. So nobody's, it's not close by, but the company started doing some small activities. So it's people who worked just in general at the company, they were putting together like small dinners. So I got to meet some people who I didn't know from the company at all, like from CE side to customer engagement or dynamics. Uh, which was really nice. And then the next week was our company-wide meeting. And so I actually knew a few faces there besides just my own team. And it was just really nice being around people because I've not done any conferences in person like at all. All of my stuff started during the pandemic. So um, yeah, that was like, I think my biggest, biggest engagement that I've had thus far. But conference season is well underway now. So sure yeah. Is. yeah. Yeah, where were you? you went to, yeah, yeah. Come on. Nate, where, wait, I'm sorry, I repeat that. 
No, I was going to let you go. I was. I think we're going to ask the same question. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask. Exactly. Yes, that's what I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I was actually in um, Seattle for 365 Educon. Okay. It used to be SharePoint Fest. And uh, yeah, I felt very much the same. Mm -hmm. I do so many virtual things, uh, you know, a lot of virtual trainings. And once in a while, I get to go to a client's location and teach in their classroom. But even then, they're doing a lot of hybrid stuff. So I, I'd really been kind of struggling with that connection piece. Mm -hmm. But then I go to this conference, and it's all in person. There's, I want to say, 500 people there. And my rooms were filling up. And I just fed off this energy. And I'm an introvert. So I feel like usually that would be draining. But it just mm -hmm. lifted me up in a way that these virtual you know, trainings just hadn't done for so long. So really looking forward to more. I've got one um, coming up the same conference, 365 Educon, but in Chicago this fall. So. Oh man! Yes. But I went to a company, all hands gathering as well, or uh, for, for the, where I work at CPS in the UK, a Microsoft partner, and um, I'm the same as, as you, Nate. I'm a, I'm an introvert by nature, mm -hmm. and I, I'd happily work like this forever. But I, I'm now sort of acknowledging that the the odd little trip like this is is very very good for the soul and i i agree i was i very mm -hmm. much enjoyed being around people um if i'm honest i was a little bit ocd with some of the covid stuff in terms of handshaking because mm -hmm. um people were coming up and shaking hands and whatnot and uh i was doing that and then discreetly going off and then <laughs> getting my hand sanitizer out uh, just in case and because I've, I've gone this long without covid so i thought i'm gonna try really hard yeah. to, to not catch it when, when going to my first in-person event but yeah. um it was great being around people but being an introvert being somebody who can sort of be around people in small doses. I did have to sort of take myself out sure. on a couple of occasions. I had to go and stand out. We were in the most beautiful country hotel in Gloucestershire in, in the UK, which is near a, the nearest city you might have heard of is called Bristol, um, which is which is gorgeous, gorgeous location that our company hired out for us. And I just thought, and the weather was beautiful. When, when the noise, the background chatter just got a bit much for me, I just took myself down the corridor out for a little walk around the grounds or maybe just went up to my room and, and just had some time to, to um, what's the word I'm looking for? De, declutter the brain, yeah. <laughs> just get some, yeah. get some thinking time. Makes sense. Yeah, I do that same thing. And I think it's important. I call it downshifting. Like I feel like I get ramped up you know, in those kind of crowded situations. And mm. sometimes you just have to step out or excuse yourself from an opportunity. Cause I know, you know, at these conferences, there's a lot of social gatherings. So I have to be kind of, you know, selective and kind of budget my energy through the yes. conference or I'll just burn out. Yeah, that one you went to looked amazing, though, there, and there was a lot of great community folk that I that I spotted were there. Where I think we had the likes of Joanne Klein was there, and yeah. Eric Catulli was there. I think my my very dear friend Stephen Rose, I think, was there as well. I think he was. Might, yeah, might have been there. He's he's such a good is such a good dude. Shameless plug for my mm -hmm. other podcast that I host with, with Stephen, which is 10, 10 Wait, songs. what? Are you, you're cheating on us, Peter? <laughs> I didn't. What is this other podcast? I'm learning so much today. <laughs> I've been, it's, it's, it's only been going a little while, actually. We've only done about um, nine shows or so, but it's a, it's a music podcast. It's um, Stephen came on this show late last year and talked to Rue and myself. And we discovered that we had a lot in common with musical tastes, a lot of um, bands and genres and artists that we had in common. And Stephen had been wanting to do a music podcast for quite some time and on the theme of 10 songs, where we each pick 10 songs every episode on a particular theme or artist or band uh, and, 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 and introduce our listeners to some music that they might not have heard before or, or considered before and, and get them thinking differently about it. Introduce them to new music sometimes, introduce mm -hmm. them to old music sometimes. And we've done shows like The Beatles. We've done Beatles covers was our first show. We've done Bowie. We've done, um, what else we've done? We've done, uh, we've done Killing Joke, which is more of a British band, which maybe is not so well known in the States and, and a few other sort of uh, British bands, Joy Division and New Order. Um, and we've got we've got a show on Adam and the Ants as well, which is one of my favorite bands, which, again, maybe is not so well known in the States, but uh, it's been great. It's been absolutely superb. We're, we're just doing it for fun. We uh, we'll, we'll see what comes of it. I'm going to check that out. Yeah, same. I 
I don't know if this sounds familiar or maybe it, I don't, you know what? I don't know, but I, what is the name of it, Pete? <laughs> it's 10 songs. Um, ten songs. so it's, um, okay. the okay. 10, 10 songs, three is the Twitter handle and 10 hyphen songs.com is the website where you can get all the links to all the playlists. Cause Steven does a playlist and I do a playlist. We each pick 10 songs. Uh, and then we have a little bit of a chit chat about what, what it means to us what uh, and what's really nice about it is we come from different angles because Stephen is very very musically inclined from a technical expertise he plays instruments he plays guitars I've never picked up an instrument in my life I I get more into the emotional connection of music uh, the, the meaning of the lyrics and uh, I couldn't tell you what the chords are or the technical stuff so we come at it from different angles and it, and it just seems to work because of that that's great. Yeah. What about you, you Nate? What are what are you doing on the side then? Any other secret well, I podcasts? Feel like, yeah, I feel like I need to get one now. Maybe <laughs> <if I can>. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, I love listening to podcasts. So this one's, of course, one of my favorites. Uh, but I also listen to some non Microsoft kind of tech community stuff. Like uh, my favorite murder is probably my favorite, and that has Karen, yeah, Karen Kilgariff and Georgia Hardstark. And uh, yeah, it's just really good true crime stuff. And what I really appreciate about it is it's not all just down in the down in the darkness, right? They start with this kind of social banter, and they talk mm -hmm. about their their lives and their current events, uh, including you know some of the recent uh, political stuff in the United States, which has been really difficult to process. Mm -hmm. And I find comfort in that, being able to relate to them uh, before they even get into the whole you know topic of the show, which is mm -hmm. true crime. You and Kat would get along phenomenally because <laughs> she also loves true crime podcasts. So I think between you and her and Progity Jane, who was a guest that we had a little while ago in Power BI, uh, yeah. they, they were the ones who were like, yes, true crime, like murder <laughs> mystery kind of stuff. Yeah, those those are your people. Yeah, that's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you talked to Kat last time. Actually, didn't you? Know? She was yep. she was on yeah, last time. I think wasn't she? Ah, okay. Kat, Kat is so cool. Kat is mm -hmm. um, Kat's getting married soon. Actually, she's getting married yeah. in, in July yeah. in Vegas. So That's super great. excited for her. We're blowing up her spot. Everybody show up at the wedding. Like it's gonna be great. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fantastic. But um, awesome stuff. But yeah, the the murder was it you, Azure, who was talking about that only murders in the building show yes that was wasn't it have, have, yes. you, seen, have you seen that one next i haven't no it's on my list though. okay yeah, is it great it's good it's like a true crime spoof and it has steve martin martin short mm -hmm. and selena gomez like a combination yeah. that you're just like i don't know how this works but it works so well mm. i love wow. steve martin and martin yeah. short like Me the two too. of them together in their you know 90s like teamwork stuff so this one it's it's very good it's on hulu um very short episodes so like 20 30 minutes but very comical and it's yeah just people are trying to solve it's based in new york there's a murder in the building and the neighbors are all trying to get together to try and solve the murder like tina fey makes an appearance in there and oh, she's fun. supposed to be like the <laughs> podcast host yeah, yeah yeah she's the host that. of the podcast yeah That's right i've forgotten that so, fact it's, so it's due a rewatch Yes, it is. It is. You know what? I think that's going to be like a, a comfort show I'm going to rewatch too because I thought it was very well done. It's so <laughs> good because you and I, as you, we discovered our mutual passion for uh, Father of the Bride, didn't we, when we got yes. talking about that? Steve Martin and Martin Short. With there? Frank. <laughs> yes, Fra Frank is the best character. By the way, did you know HBO is doing a remake of Father of the Bride? Are they? They are. Really? Yes. Wow. Uh, who is in it? I can't remember. Oh, the dad is the dad from Schitt's Creek. I don't remember his name. So fun. Eugene Levy. Yes. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I just happened to see like an ad for it maybe about two weeks ago, but I'm, I'm looking forward to that. There's it's like two. Oh, and uh, the Time Traveler's Wife, not Steve the Martin. The Time Traveler's Wife. They're making it a TV show. Yes, I think episode wow. one's already out because I oh. love that film. I read the book. Me too. And Me too. We love that Luz and I love that film with Eric Banner and yes, Rachel McAdams. Name? Rachel McAdams, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. They are so, so good in those roles. It's so emotional. Um, love it. Love it to bits. And what the good thing about mm, losing my voice, <laughs> but the good thing about a TV show version of it is that they'd be able to expand it out and put so much more that was so. in the books that yes. they couldn't fit into a, an mm. hour and a half movie. So, really looking forward to that. <clears throat> Yeah, that's really exciting. 
Yeah, yeah. we got yeah. off on a tangent there, but only murders in the building. <laughs> you gotta watch it. <laughs> yeah, that's very nice. Yeah. yeah, that sounds that's awesome. Nice. Yeah, it's season two is supposed to be coming out. I think later this year. I maybe? think so. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it's gonna be far away. Yeah. I'm far um, behind. I feel like one just came out. <laughs> yeah, it didn't come out too. I think it was maybe fall of last year or so. I mean, I caught it like months later because I think I, I watched it before. Um, maybe like January, February ish, but it was it was very good, very like yeah. Louise watched it first, and she said, "You got to watch this because she knows how much I love Steve Martin and Martin Shaw." Yes. So uh, she says, "You're gonna you're gonna absolutely love this." So and she wasn't <laughs> wrong; it was so good. I just um, I love Father of Bright, so it's so funny. So did you see the the third sort of short? one they did on YouTube during the pandemic where they all, mm-hmm. oh, oh, I'm going to have to find okay. it and send you the link. Please do. The, the original cast, <laughs> every, everyone was in it. Steve Martin, <gasps> Martin Short, the whole, um, the, what, Diane Keaton, yes. all of them were back. Oh. And they did like a 10 or 15 minute um, Zoom call on on, on YouTube um, oh. and uh, just through the pandemic. And it was just, it was brilliant. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm sure you'll love it. I've, but, I've um, written it down. I feel like YouTube shorts are always great. I don't know if another tangent. I don't know if y'all ever saw IKEA Heights. Um, no. There was there is a whole YouTube like mini series of people doing a drama in IKEA. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, they, and maybe this is why they know they have the signs now that you can't record in IKEA. But it was oh. great. I think it might it might have been like five episodes, if that. But it was just dramatic and they would you know use like the bedrooms as like the bedrooms yeah. and the scenes and so recommend that That's one <laughs> very uh, economical move into ikea you could um if you need somewhere to stay on an evening uh, you just sneak in hide until they close and then spend the night <laughs> there, there. <you> yeah <laughs> i love the room. Made snacks and yeah mm-hmm. well, well prepared well prepared <laughs> yeah i don't yeah. know if it's the same in the states or across it because things sometimes are the same, sometimes are different, but they have these really great chocolate bars in Ikea in the UK. They're called Dime Bars, D-A-I-M, and they are so, mm-hmm. you can only get them in Ikea in okay. this country, and they are so good. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I haven't heard of those. Yeah, yeah maybe I'm not then. Take a look. <laughs> yeah, when you start saying chocolate, they have at least here these uh, oatmeal chocolate cookies that are pretty good, and it's like two mm. oatmeal cookies, crispy yeah, oatmeal yeah. cookies with like a chocolate filling. And oh, they're, beautiful. They're addictive. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely so addictive. But um, oh, this is what I love about this show. We start talking about a team's book and we just <laughs> end up chatting about all sorts of good stuff. Yes, this... okay. So back to do we go back to the book? Do we need to? <laughs> oh, no, I don't know. Not necessarily. Okay. But... <laughs> I want, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask um, contents of the book. So preparing for this exam, who would take the MS, the MS 700? So is it the, so 900, is 900 the first one, right? Or? For a lot of people, yeah, the MS 900 is kind of the fundamentals for all of Microsoft 365. And we hear a lot of people who say, oh, I'm going to do that one first, just because mm-hmm. it is kind of general and it's easier to get uh, into. But then 700 is uh, the associate level. So it's a little bit trickier ah. and it's specific on Microsoft Teams. So it, it's going to talk a little bit about integration stuff, but mostly, you know, how do I administer Teams for my organization? Now, um, I don't know, you know, how Peter feels about it, but for me, I think, you know, anybody's going to be eligible to take this who has an interest in becoming an administrator or at least learning the topics about it. Mm -hmm. Um, But you don't necessarily have to come into it with, uh, you know, in-depth knowledge of Microsoft Teams. Like, for example, you know, I didn't have phone knowledge for the longest time until I got ready for this exam. And then I, you know, ended up writing the exam book with Peter. And now I know stuff about phone and voice. (laughs) But you don't have to, you know, have that coming into it. Yeah, know. it's a great way to learn. Uh, you learn as you write sometimes, because I was the same. I didn't know I'm anything sure. about phones in Teams, but Nate was way braver than me. He took it on. He said, sure, I'll do this part. And I was like, so relieved. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you so much for doing the phone yeah, stuff. Of course. <laughs> oh, I, I like yeah, that, I learning by doing. Yeah. yeah, we learn by doing. We yeah. really do. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I've learned so much from writing books and blogs mm-hmm. when, you, when you have a need to solve a problem mm-hmm. for community or customer or whatever, I, I go and try and learn it so I can mm-hmm. so I can help fi- figure out the problem and then maybe blog about it if it's not going in a book or or, or a customer document and, and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But it's so so cool. So cool. But 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 yeah, I mean anyone could take the exam really. You 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 can do it 
standalone, or you can do it as part of trying to get a uh, the Enterprise Administrator Expert certification, okay. which you achieve by doing, and that's a three-star certification, um, as opposed to a two-star, which you get if you do this on its own, I think, from memory. I think that's right, Nate, right? That's right. Um, and um, so, 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 yeah, and, and there's different ways that you can achieve that um, that three-star cert. So you could mm -hmm. do uh, MS100 and MS101 and then MS500 to get the Enterprise Administrator Associate, or you could do the MS700, which is the team. So there's different paths by which you can get there, depending on what you're going to what you're working towards, what, what your career mm. is and what your job is and whatnot. I mean, I, there'll be, I'm not familiar with them at all, but I'm, I'm sure the certification, mean, in fact, I know the certifications in, in, in your area as well as you for, for, for your area of power platform. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's PL 900 and, and uh, is, is that something you've explored yourself yet? Have you gone down the certification route? No. Right? Uh, no. no. <laughs> well, there there was a time uh, when I first started at my job. So I've been here, I guess, in two weeks will be. I've been here like three and a half months. Um, I was told originally by my boss, he was like, oh, you're going to have plenty of time to study for certs as you get ramped up no three days in they're like we're putting you on a project we're sending mm -hmm. on a business trip um and so certs is still just like this thing to have over yeah, in the yeah. corner so one day one day i will i will get there um yeah it's 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 on the docket but i was like i got into tech with no certs and i don't know yeah. if that's mm -hmm. a if that's unusual or not um, not at all not at cool. all cool um i didn't do them for yeah i before I did Microsoft exams, and I think the first Microsoft exam I did was in something like 2018, mm -hmm. I hadn't passed an exam in my life, uh, in school or otherwise. I wasn't, and I'm still not academically minded. Mm -hmm. um, so it was totally early in the idea of doing exams. I just didn't want to do them. And then my boss at the time at the place I was working, he was saying, It'd be really great if you could try and do mm -hmm. a couple of Microsoft certifications that would really help us as a as a business yes, and yes. and also add credibility to validate your skills and whatnot. And I I really didn't want to do it. And I thought I'm not sure I can do it. I I had in my head that I I'd already failed at that point. Mm. But but I went ahead and did it. And to my astonishment, I passed that first one. And no word of a lie literally cried with joy when I passed. I was like, oh. I can't believe I actually did this. So, and then it just unlocked something in me. And, and that, that moment literally led me to where I am now. It led me to the community, to MVP, to uh, career progression. Um, so much has opened up because I did that. It's just wow. cascaded because of doing that. But I'd, I'd been working in IT for I don't know, 25 years mm -hmm. up until that point without exams and did mm -hmm. just fine. But it, doing that set me on a trajectory which yeah. took took things to a whole new level. Yeah. yeah, it's really nice to hear you share that because I think a lot of people struggle, um, even myself with, you know, like imposter syndrome, especially towards the beginning of these kind of trajectories you're talking about. Uh, and I hear a lot of people do these exams, you know, not for their workplace even, or to get a specific job, but to validate knowledge. Mm -hmm. And when you get that, when you can say, hey, you know what, I passed it, which tells me that I, I'm good enough, right? That I, I know the material, validates that knowledge. And it's just that sense of, you know, growth personally that maybe drives someone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, guys, you're saying a lot of things that resonate with me. So hey. we'll, we'll, we'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like organically it'll happen when it's meant to happen and when you're ready for it yeah i think that's one thing i've been discussing with a good friend of mine is like ah there's been at least for 2022 for me there's you know like this job kind of came out of nowhere like i found myself like in tech now and i'm adjusting to like changes like even good changes cause a little bit of stress um mm -hmm. and i think that's where i am right now is just like adjusting and i'm learning so much um but all these like certs feel like something extra for me right now, although I really want to to do one. Um, I think I'm just trying to prioritize like what comes first at this point, because I feel like I could spend 24 hours learning everything, which is I feel like what I was doing prior to starting this job. Now I'm trying to separate. I, I was having a, a moment where I was trying to separate. Well, my my hobby is now my job. So how do I draw that that line in between the two without feeling like a workaholic? And somebody mentioned to me, they're like, well, 
think about artists. Do artists decide like what's work and what's not work art? And I was like, ooh, that's actually a good way to to put it. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah, I think we'll just we'll just keep trekking along at this point. And yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it feels a little amorphous right now. I think there's too many things that I could be chasing. Uh, a little bit of analysis paralysis. Uh, <laughs> it, this community, though, it, it, we are, I think, sort of unique. And I'm, I'm, I can't think of another community where so many of us have the passion to do this. What is actually our job? As you mm -hmm. said, much more eloquently than I did there. Because so, <laughs> <laughs> my work is my hobby, as you say. Yes, and yes. Uh, Ru always says the same. Kat always says the same, too. And uh, it's so, so true. We Ru famously says to me quite often when I talk to him, um, in my spare time, I literally never go more than about 20 minutes without thinking about something related to Office 365. <laughs> mm -hmm. We're yeah. obsessed! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, we take it to work with you, tell everybody about the latest and greatest, take it to yes. holiday gatherings with family, and you're like, oh, you should be using Power Automate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, if you if you let me sit next to you, I will tell you about our Lord and Savior, Power Automate. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's a, <laughs> I love it so much. So I, I love that we have this enthusiasm, right? It makes it easier to do our jobs too, because we love it. Not to say there aren't frustrations with it, but I, I don't think yet right any day that i'm working with the platform that i'm like i wish i was not doing this i mm. wish i was doing something else so right um, yeah yeah and that's not to say you don't have days where you're less motivated and a bit sure. tired and, and, sure. and all that because yeah i i i wake up probably most days lately and i think oh morning but that doesn't mean i don't <laughs> love my job and my community right. and everything i just don't really care for mornings much at the minute. I, I come alive at, at, at night right now. Um, when it's bedtime, I'm like wired and buzzing. Yeah. And but, uh, Can relate. <laughs> yeah, completely. <laughs> but uh, what, what a gift, what, what an absolute gift the MVP program is as well, though. Mm -hmm. what, what that gives to us, um, the, the connection we have with Microsoft, the feedback mm -hmm. we can give them and, and everything that all the good stuff that they give to us as MVPs. So th that recognition that they give us is such a huge honor and a privilege. Um, I can't speak highly enough to anyone listening about that experience. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure all three of us have spoken to others in the community who are interested in getting involved in that journey mm -hmm. and uh, I can't speak highly enough of it. Yeah. I, got, I think the, the 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 greatest piece of advice that I got when I got MVP was filter your emails, like with all the distribution <laughs> lists. And I was like, ooh, that did me a solid because I see the yeah. emails come in. and But I love peering through them because I'm like, ooh, this might be applicable towards me. But yes, filtering, mm. that was just a, a random tidbit that popped into my head. I <laughs> wish somebody had told me that because <laughs> when I got awarded, I went into those um, distribution lists that you can sign up for and I just went tick, 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 tick. Tick, tick. Oh, this is nice. This is shiny. And like, oh, my. almost right. two years later, my inbox is still not recovered. Your inbox is <laughs> popping. Okay, Pete, may, if you haven't set up filters, we should set them up for you. Yes. Yeah, I label and archive. And so you can just go in Gmail, at least you can just go to your labels and it's very nice and organized and it works <laughs> so very well. <laughs> oh, but oh, so so cool though such a cool experience mm -hmm. but um Definitely. shall we have it actually while we're while we're talking sporadically about this new book of ours shall we just quickly share it on the screen so people yeah. can have a wee look uh let me see if i can remember how to do this because i've got it tour. open i've got it open in amazon so chrome tab let's see if we can do this that should be there now. There we go. Beautiful. So yes. this is the book. This is what you get. And you can get this in, this is in British pounds mm -hmm. because I'm on amazon.co.uk, but you can get it on all the different flavors of Amazon throughout the world, amazon.com and um, others around the world. I can't think of another example now, shamefully, but um, 
and you can get it on paperback you can get it on kindle mm -hmm. as well and if you buy it directly from the packed website as well you can actually get it as a as a pdf download which is really yes. really handy to have so that's a good way to get it also if you go to packed pa ckt.com you can subscribe to um, their content and, and get access to a lot of great con content in their library too because uh, we've had a lot of authors on on the channel over the past few months uh, with with books from pact for information protection and security certifications we've we've had uh, shabazz daron and victor hedberg in recent times and we've had um who else did we have on? We've had, um, I can see his face, but I cannot get his name. Um, oh, this is really going to bug me. And I know, Azure, you did a show with Rue not that long ago with two really cool guys who yes. wrote one of the, the, the packed books too. Yes. And whose names I also cannot remember at the moment. Did yeah. I uh, Dwayne, Dwayne Natwick, Dwayne, Dwayne Natwick is the, 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 the really lovely guy who wrote one of the other books. And you can find this all in our, in our sort of back catalog on our YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash cloud conversations. So a little plug there, please do like, and subscribe. Trevor Stewart and yes. Joe, uh, Joe does not have his last name up. So <laughs> yeah, is it something like Joe? Joe Anik. An Joe Anik, Anik, that's right. Anik. A N I C H, yeah, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. But they, I enjoyed that episode so much because I was not. There was you and Rue doing that one, and they yeah. were such lovely guys. Really, really lovely guys. They were such such fun to listen to. As as were the other guys. Um, all all good 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 people who give their time and and passion to the community and um and yeah we do get paid a bit of money for doing this as well it's a nice side hustle but i, I think mm -hmm. we we all do this for for the love of of what we do predominantly mm -hmm. I, I would have done it w without um without the money to be honest because I, I i recall when you and i first got together on on, on this net i think uh You'd, you'd had concerns about me sort of reducing my my earnings and so you were worried about me and i said hey don't worry about it. It's not why I'm doing it. So. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely but, worth it. And it's really neat when, you know, when you get the copy of the book and you can hold it in your hands and, you know, your name's on it. I just remember that that first feeling. I still oh, have that. Such a good feeling. But but yeah, this, this is so good here on the Amazon site. You can see what you'll learn, who it's aimed at, what what's in the book, the table of contents. And if you like what what you see when you get it, do do go and give us a, a a very nice review. We will appreciate that very, very much indeed. And um, let let us know what you think of it. Also, let let us know what you think when if 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 you if you do get it and if it helps you pass the exam. We'd love to hear. I mean, you're so right though, Nate. When you get that book in your hands, it's just like yay! Aww. There you go. It's got both of our cool. names on the side there. Whoa. Yep. Can I do this? <laughs> there you go. But, okay, uh, if I ever decide to write a book, I know who I'm coming to. Just... Yeah, happy, happy right. to help. Happy to help. Mm -hmm. And uh, who knows? Don't my one of my phrases in life is never rule anything in or out. Never say never. That's the phase yeah. of life that I'm in right now. I've been uh, Issa Issa Rae is my goddess of manifestation, and so I uh, I've manifested things, and she hasn't let me down yet. So yeah. you know, we're just, yeah, keep it yeah. up. That's that's <laughs> it. We're gonna let it. We're gonna let her do her thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. That works. Try and have faith in that you're on the right path, and uh, you will you'll get to where you need to go. Right, and kind of avoiding that that tunnel vision too, because I know in my own career, like if you would have asked me ten years ago, what are you going to do in ten years? Mm -hmm. Never would have guessed this. Mm -hmm. Never would have guessed I would be living here, doing this job, know anything called SharePoint. <laughs> but here I am somehow, and I've done things that I could never have dreamed of before. Yeah. And I think it's the the pivotal moments in life that really lead us to these places, like the people along the way, like one specific manager I can think of who asked me to learn about SharePoint and gave me that opportunity and challenged me to self-educate and get to the space. Without mm. that, I might still be you know, in a completely different industry doing something maybe I wouldn't enjoy as much. Sure. So it's people along the way and those opportunities that really shaped that path. Yeah. That is so true. Working through imposter syndrome a lot. And yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, yeah. I don't, I, I feel like many of us suffer from that a lot. Um, it's nice to know that we're not alone in that either. I think Definitely. pretty much 
most people who come on this show will mm -hmm. speak to that. I think it is so common in, in, in the times we're living in. And I've, I felt it, as I'm sure most people who experience it, most of my life. But we talk about things more now, and with the technology we've got, it's easier to be open. Well, for some, for some people, not necessarily everyone. Um, but, but I speak quite openly about it because I like to try and help people and make them realize they're not on their own. Mm -hmm. um, on things like imposter syndrome and like mm -hmm. mental health and anxiety and depression and all that sort of stuff, which mm -hmm. is which is why the humans of IT community that um, that that I've worked with quite a lot recently is, has meant so much to me and big, big shout out to another former guest on the show, Ali Thompson of, of, mm -hmm. of Microsoft, who, yes. uh, she's so, so lovely and does so much hard work for, for the community and the MVPs and human rights IT. And, uh, she, she, she put me together with, um, Megan Strand, um, to do a, a session at build, uh, this week, which, which is on the subject of autism and anxiety and, mm -hmm and running out of spoons, which you can check out. I can, I can put the link in the description yes. as well. Another shameless plug. Yes. But um, when you talk to people, though, so many people resonate to say, oh my God, what you've just said, it could be, it's like looking in a mirror. Mm -hmm. I've always felt like I am going to be found out that I'm going to get fired because I'm not good enough because I don't know what I'm doing. And, and I'm, it's, it's, why do we think that? Why mm -hmm. do we think that? It's weird, isn't it? The psyche. Yeah. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Yeah. Donna Sarkar had also put out something the other day that also resonated with me about, um, you know, people saying like, oh, I don't want to be seen as like somebody who's bragging about like what I do and therefore mm. they don't post. And I was like, you know, I kind of resonate with that too. And she was like, no, 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 you're just talking about like here, I did this and this is what impact it had, right? Like this is how it contributed to success. And that's all it has to be. It doesn't, you don't have to worry about you are bragging about your accomplishment. Like this may help somebody else, um, you know, just just be factual in, in what yeah. you're doing too, which I was like, you know what? That's a really good way to like reframe it too. Mm. Um, Cause I get like us being in like, the, I'm putting it in the public eye um, stirs up like some things too, like, oh, what, is this is this useful? I don't know. I'm putting it out there. Maybe people will read it. Maybe won't. Maybe they won't. But she was just like, yeah. Yeah, just state the facts. Like it's okay. Somebody's gonna take something away from it. Yeah, uh, yeah. absolutely. You do worry like you're massaging your own ego at times, don't mm -hmm. you? You do think, mm -hmm. oh, am I just am I being boastful here? Or but no, you just you're just trying to help generally mm -hmm. and and stating the facts as you say. Mm -hmm. And it's it's important to try and share that that knowledge. And, and if you get one person who comes back and says, thank you so much, that was so useful. It, it really makes you dead, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But uh, I am just conscious of time, actually, because I, I know Nate, that you have something Ooh. that you need to get to. And yeah, I have talk. a meeting that started three minutes ago. Whoops. <laughs> 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 so we um, mustn't keep you any longer, but thank you, my dear friend, for joining us, and thank you so much for working with me on this again. It will not be the last time, I'm absolutely sure. Um, so, any final thoughts before we before we finish off? Yeah, no, I just want to say thank you to both of you. This has been a really good use of my time, and I really appreciate getting to get to know you better um, and then just spend this time talking about things that are important to all of us. I think we need that human interaction more. Um, and I just want to shout out to everybody right now, especially in the U.S., who's dealing with uh, a lot of the fallout from national events uh, from Buffalo and now Uvalde. Yeah. Um, this has been really hard, and I just hope that everybody feels welcome to reach out to me uh, if you want someone to chat to or just take that moment to reach out to coworkers. I know there's a lot of silence that happens around these sometimes, but other people feel it too and might want to talk as well. Great. Yeah, beautifully said, my friend, beautifully said. Um, right, no better way to end than on those wonderful thoughts. So thank you all for tuning in. Thank you, Azure. It's been uh, wonderful to finally do a show with you. Um, take care of yourselves, uh, reach out to each other and, uh, and talk. And we will see you on the next episode of Cloud Conversations very soon. Bye-bye now. Awesome. Thanks, everyone. Bye.